are watching The World According to Eric with the baddest on the block, Eric Devante. And today I'm at the Miracle Theater in Inglewood for the screening premiere of Rue's Blues. Promise me you'll be there. Created by Donnie Hugh Frazier and directed by Samson McCormick. This film follows a millennial queer black man along his journey to love, life, and personal development. You do not want to miss this, so stay tuned to The World According to Eric. All right, ladies and gentlemen, with me now, I have the man with the plan, the creator of Rue's Blues, Promise Me, you'll be there, Mr. Donnie Hugh Frazier. Congratulations on an amazing premiere. How are you feeling tonight? Give us more. You know, I'm like a little bit like I'm bursting like I feel like a firecracker like something is ready to explode and I'm just super excited that I was able to like birth this idea and manifest this whole entire moment this event for all of us to come together it's black it's queer it's culture and it tells the truth from my like my pen and so I'm not leaving my story up to anybody else to tell I'm telling it on my own so I'm excited about that yeah and what was the inspiration behind Ruth's Blues the inspiration behind Ruth's Blues was just I had gone on a sexual liberation journey myself and I learned a lot along the way and I felt like the things that I discovered I needed to like project for my community because it's a lot of stuff that we don't know and coming from a background of public health I understand that they don't really care about us and they don't care about people that look like us and they want our numbers and they want us to show up to events and things like that for the sake of grants but they're not often like compassionate enough to see the, the vulnerability and the truth of who we are. So what are you hoping that viewers leave and take with them after watching this film? Honestly, I hope that they leave inspired and inspired to do whatever they want to do. This was a long time coming and beyond the message, it's like I am a practitioner in the art of possibility and I think like whatever you want to do, you could put your mind to it and make it happen. But there's a lot of people that hold themselves back for the like a fear or whatever and I want people to bypass that. Now on a deeper level, it's the, the stuff that they will walk away educated with and more aware of how to take care of themselves or what to do and how to support each other through that. Mm -hmm. A man with a deeper message. I love the intention yes. is the word. Nothing without intention. Solange says nothing without intention. So, yeah. Can you give me a message that you would want your cast members to hear? Yes. My cast I couldn't have done this without anybody, cast or crew, um, along with this project. This is my first time doing this with a full on cast. and. I want them to know that I'm super proud of them, that I believed in them from the jump, and it was a lot of our first times doing all of this stuff. And to see them shine, to see them like burst and, and fall into who they were as those characters was really, really precious to see. And that made me super happy, so I'm extremely grateful. Extremely and eternally grateful for them. And this is no easy feat. This is all about you. You have a whole theater, a future carpet, okay, baby, specially designed. So what did you learn about yourself through the creation of this whole process? That I have the ability to trust myself on a level I didn't think I had before. Like I trusted myself before, but I had to trust myself enough to trust other people. And that was really big for me coming from a very self-sufficient place. Um, I also learned that I can do whatever I put my mind to. And it, it's not to say that it's easy, but it's possible. First off, congratulations on directing. Is this your directorial debut? No, this is the uh, second film that I've directed. The first, one was. the first one was a film called A Different Direction, and that has uh, Daryl Stevens and Miss Laura Hayes. Oh, all right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, what can you tell us about Ruse Blues? Ruse Blues, first of all, I am super excited for Donnie. I'm super proud of Donnie. And secondly, it's a very important story about um, relationships, dating in our current social climate. Should have been a horror film, and um, <laughs> and and the importance of, of safe sex. So, what are you hoping that viewers leave with after watching this film? The importance of of our stories as Black queer men. We have so many more stories to tell, and um, and they need to be told, and they need to be celebrated. Like we're here to celebrate it today. Why is it important that we have spaces like this and where people like you can step up and tell your stories as opposed to having other people tell our lives and our stories? Oh God, because nobody else is going to give us the opportunities and I want for black queer men especially to understand how important it is for us to tell our own stories and not just tell our own stories but be excited about those of us who are telling our stories. Um, you know, before anything I'm a stand-up comedian and when, when, when some black queer men show up to the shows they sit there and they look at you like this and and we can't do that we have to show up and we have to 
I'd love, it's a ghetto world, y'all done. <laughs> no. Um, you know, when we when we show up, we have to we have to celebrate it. You know, it, it takes a lot of tenacity and strength to be first black in America. And 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 I don't think I think we have yet to understand the greatness that that is. We don't. We we still are learning to acquire certain resources and things as black people. We've got where we are without that. That tells you how magical we are as black people. And then on top of that, we are we're queer people. And there is a certain beauty that we should be embracing as black queer men. And so, seeing us on screen allows us an opportunity to reflect on it, and celebrate it. You better preach a good word, Samson. I've been doing this a long time. It's important. Is there a message that you want Donnie to hear? We are so proud of you, Donnie. You know, even though you showed up to the premiere looking like Elmo. Um, <laughs> I told y'all stop letting Samson on these carpets. He means no good every time he step on it. That's why I'm here, though. Donnie, we are seriously so proud of you. Um, and, and you just, you are amazing. I hope you know how amazing you are and I hope you know how supported and celebrated you are. We, we are so proud of you. Now, what can you tell us about Mitchell? Mitchell is Rue's best friend. Um, he is a fun ride or die best friend. You know that best friend that you call up when you like, girl, he did it. Mm -hmm. Okay. When shit is sitting in the fam. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Mm -hmm. So we all need a Mitchell. I need a Mitchell. And I feel like most groups do have a Mitchell, but if you don't, you need a Mitchell. So ladies, if you don't have somebody that's coming to your aid when shit gets crazy, you're not doing it right. Now how did this opportunity present itself to you? So, Donnie told me that he had a part that he thought I should read for, and I was like, Donnie girl, like, you know I don't, I don't act, girl, I'm not, I'm not. He was like, okay, I get that, but like, I want you to read for it. I'm gonna send you the script, read it, tell me what you think. Read the script, read the part of Mitchell, and I was like, I like him, like, I get it. He resonated with you? Res he resonated with me, like, the fact that he was from LA, he had, like, a strong friend group, I'm from LA as well, I have a strong friend group, and just his personality was, like, really big and just, like, fun, and I was like, I can do Mitchell. So I did meet you. And I'm playing the role of Levante. Levante. What can you tell us about Levante? Okay, so Levante is cool, suave, a little, a lot of hood. I ain't gonna lie, he's a lot of hood. <laughs> Mom can have some ways about himself, but you know, he means well, honestly. He really does mean well. And I think in this film, you'll see that he really wants Rue back. And he's trying to be the best version of himself because I feel like in the past that he didn't feel like he was giving him all. But now he's like, okay, you know what, I'm back, I got my head on strong, I got my other stuff worked out. Because you know we all have our stuff that we have to deal with. We all got work to do. We all got work to do. I think Levante's definitely done the work and he's trying to show Rue this through himself. But he's also letting Rue know, I'm still a catch too as well. You know, because you gotta you got let them know sometimes. You have to let them know, you have to let people know. Which you're We're equally yoked, we're both the prize. And I think a lot of gay people don't, a lot of people in relationships don't understand that both of you can be the prize. So how do you feel like you guys tackle those gay queer issues in this film? I feel like, okay, so one of the things I really liked about the character when actually Donnie sent me the script was that Levante actually was born with HIV. And I love that he brought that to the forefront to hopefully destigmatize some of the nuances and some of the preconceived notions we have of, that people have about people that are born with HIV and people that have contracted HIV as well too. As far as relationships and things like that go, especially within the community, I'm hoping, we're artists, we all hope to inspire people and we hope that, you know, that we're doing the best we can for the world to try to do those things. So I'm hoping in seeing this as well too that we just honestly paint a whole picture of this so that way people aren't just judging people anymore, people aren't just looking at people and saying, I know this, I know this about this person. We're all people, we all have our shit that we have going through. We all need to extend some type of grace to each other as well. That we would like to extend to ourselves. Absolutely. What did you learn about yourself through the role of Levante? Ooh, hmm. the vulnerability part. I kind of still struggle with that personally in my personal life, even in relationships um, with people as well too. So that's been a challenge for me. I think with this particular role was it required me to give a lot more of myself than I'm typically okay with giving in my personal life because I'm a very much to myself, very much private person. But with Levante, Levante wears his emotions on his sleeves. As cool, calm, and collected as he is, he still want, he still wants to be loved just like we all do. And I think with my own life, I'm like, okay, if I want those things, I'd be willing to give more of my myself 
and not be so closed off or be so afraid of letting go sometimes. Yeah. Now before I let you go, do you have a message that you would like for Donnie to hear? Donnie, I appreciate everything you've done for this. I appreciate you for reaching out to me for this project. I know that everything is great. I haven't been hounding you about seeing any edits or anything like that because I trust you. I trust what you're doing and I trust your process. And I'm looking forward to this. I'm anxious, I'm nervous, but if I want to say anything else, I don't know. Two words above, two, three words above thank you. And I really appreciate you and I'm grateful for the type of person you are and I'm grateful that we're in each other's lives as well too. So what are you hoping that the viewers leave with after watching this film? Um, there's two things that I hope that the viewers get from this film. One, I hope the, I hope the viewers get curious about finding more resources, resources and solutions for mental health within the black gay community. Um, and not just the black gay community, but LGBTQI community as a whole, but f finding resources for us. Also, finding themselves in the film so that they don't no longer have the fear of when something happens to them. They don't go to trauma responses. We actually go into taking care of ourselves and loving ourselves first and then going and reaching out to people. There is nothing wrong with reaching out and getting help when it comes to mental health, spiritual health, um, emotional health. You know, we need those resources. We need each other to lift each other up to find those things. So those are the two things that I hope they find. Beautifully said. And really quick, just give us a message that you would love for Donnie to hear. Um, a message for Donnie to hear. Number one, Donnie, um, never compromise your peace for a small piece of someone else. Lead with love, lead with accountability, and lead with being aligned with your purpose. And always your truth. That's what I would want to leave with. Three jobs and one film. Oh, baby. Busy. A thespian. <laughs> a thespian. Okay, first off, how did this opportunity come about? Well, Good note, I've known Donnie since we were in high school. So we reconnected and we've been doing plays together, movies together, films together. And so when he called me and said he had a role for me, I just knew like I could not say no. So that's how we got the ball rolling for this. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what can you tell us about Rose Blues? What should we look forward to? Oh my God, look. Have y'all seen the trailer? Cause uh -huh. I was like, God dang. Baby, a scandalo, a scandalo. It was getting steamy. It's sponsored in my dress today. You see these chains, I'm just, I'm just saying. All right, real kinky. <laughs> Once again, happy pride kids. <laughs> okay, I love that. All right, so it's steamy. What do you think that audiences will leave taking from this film? You know, I think that every last one of us have went through a phase, I will say a whole phase. And at the end of that, Common Sense came in and we had to get checked. And I think from, from what I've gathered from my scenes and just being a part of it is like self-care. You know, you gotta take care of yourself and that's health-wise, that's mentally, that's spiritually, all, all of it. So that is my take from this entire film and I just can't wait to see all the elements come together. So how did this opportunity present itself for you? How did you find out about the audition? How was this whole experience? Well, Donnie and I are friends. Uh, we met on a set for a different show. Um, and he reached out to me and, and of course I have to like have my friends back. So uh, when he asked me to do it, more than happy to, I was more than happy to do it, so I did. Um, glad I did. Had a great time, like I said. Um, the project, it's a great project, so, yeah. So what are you hoping that viewers leave and take away from this film? Uh, my primary hope is for viewers to, uh, to find at least one character to connect with, um, where their story, their experience resonates with them, um, and they just take it back and, and learn from the characters on screen um, and apply those things to the, their own lives, so. What would you say is the overarching message of this film? Ah, uh -huh. that's a tough one. I guess we have to wa wait and find out. You were also saying that you're an advocate for seeing black gay love shared openly. Can you talk a bit about that? What does that look like? And is there a shortage in, as far as you're concerned? Yes, loving in public is one of the biggest issues that we face as not only a queer community, but a black queer community. The more of us that are willing and are free and are brave enough to love in public, the more normalized we become. The more we live our lives in secret and hiding in shame, uh, the more people can stigmatize us, make up stories about us. I love to be a facilitator of my own story. I love to be the crafter of my own show. And so I ain't got time to be loving in private. And, and, and I love a lot of people. And I like to have sex with a lot of people. But we need to stop sex shaming too. Have your fun, do your hoeing, do it safely, and live your life. Happy Pride, kids. <laughs>
now what can the people ca expect from you tonight as the MC and the, the host of the panel? Well, so first and foremost, I'm so excited to be collaborating with Donnie on this project. I had the opportunity to be in the film, but I had to turn it down. So I told him that I would love to support him in the capacity of being the master of ceremonies and or the panelist host. So uh, and in that, one thing, I'm, I always bring a historical context and lens to everything I do. So I'm going to have him really dissect the casting, the production process, and also the cast and crew alike. So we're really getting out to the nitty gritty. You see what I'm saying? So that's what it's going to give. Uh, and what are you hoping that people leave with after watching this film, after hearing the panel discussion? What's the biggest takeaway that you think people will get from today? The biggest takeaway is that you can be your own yes. One thing um, I love that Don, this started as a one-man show. And as you see, now it's a feature to where even like a cast member, Jamal, is debuting his first film. So just him stepping out on faith and following his dreams, he's been able to take everyone else along. right? And it's a gore. I mean... We got the baddest bitch here, we got the red carpet, it's giving specialty drinks, you see what I'm saying? So it's giving ooh ooh and ah yeah yeah yeah, you know, so I'm so excited to be a part of the success of Rules Blues. Uh -huh. yeah. The last thing I want to ask you, do you have a message that you would like for Donnie to hear when he watches this all back? Oh my God, first and foremost Donnie, you, you know I think the world of you, but I want to highlight your superpower to go cultivate relationship and fellowship amongst your community. You are the ultimate light, the ultimate butter, the ultimate glue, and it shows here tonight. We love you. You're celebrated and cherished. Do you hear me? So what brings you to the premiere of Ruse Blues? Well, definitely, you know, I've been a friend of Donnie's and, you know, we've been associated through several different projects and um, I was originally approached to be in the film, but I couldn't do it, unfortunately. So I'm like, well, you know what? Even if I'm not in it, I want to support because it's a project about black gay men, right. and I'm supporting all that. Anytime, if it's black, if it's gay, if it's black and gay, I'm going to be there to support. Yeah. Why is it important that we have films like this where gay black men, queer black men are on display? Well, because usually when we see projects that are gay, it's always usually white guys. And if it's black, it's usually heterosexual so it's kind of a thing of like you know we are here as well we've always been here we've always been a part of the community so our stories need to be told and celebrated as well so what brings you to the premiere of rose blues uh, I mean so many people of course I had to come out and support Donnie you know I've been working with Donnie for years uh, I'm one of the first people to get him with his acting chops because I knew he was an actor before he did and so to see him at this level doing his thing I am so proud of him killing it like he's executive producer what Everybody don't do that. So I had to come out and support him, but then my sister Jessica's in it. Uh, of course, uh, we got Clark Lewis in it. I mean, there's just so many people that are part of this project. Anthony Bond, my business partner. So, I mean, I had to come out and support. Yeah. Why is it important to have films where we are represented and on display? I mean, first of all, what, what month is this? This is Gay Pride Month. So as, as we start celebrating us more and more, it's important that we, we control the narratives of who we are to the community outside of our community because they need to see different images. They always think of us in one way, but we are so many stories, we're so many people, and we're so many things. I mean, all those stories deserve to be told and it's important for us to control that narrative and not someone else because then we become the stereotypes. And I don't know about you, but I'm sick of being a stereotype. You guys, Ruse Blues, Promise Me You'll Be There is absolutely incredible. A story of black love, black empowerment, queer black love and empowerment. To everyone that wasn't able to make it to the screening, I highly encourage you to make sure you catch Ruse Blues, Promise Me You'll Be There. Congratulations, Donnie, and congratulations, Samson. Thank you for watching The World According to Eric.